God was his promises, all these things. And Job himself, but something that didn't exempt Job, even though Job was an upright man, he's one that was a, a shoe of evil, turned away, and lived righteously before God. But Job still did not exempt him from having troubles and trials. Told to Satan, said, now if you just let down the hedge, I'll come in. And God said, you can do so. He said, God allowed the hedge to be dropped. Yes. But he said, you cannot touch his soul. And old Satan came, didn't he? That's right. Oh, you know what? Trouble comes. Listen to me. Even though you're living right, even though you're walking upright, you're living and talking right, trouble still comes to those that are good. Bad things still happen to good people, don't they? Yes. Just because you're saved this month, it doesn't exempt you from trouble. Jesus said in John 16, 33, he said, in, in this world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcame. <laughs> now we all have some troubles. But my goodness, you ever really studied in Job how much trouble he had? I mean, when it was unleashed upon him, old Satan hit him. He hit him from the sides. He hit him from above. He hit him from beneath. Sometimes you feel like maybe you're getting hit in all different directions. And here old Satan came from him. He literally just hindered his health, took his wealth from him. All the cattle, Job was a very wealthy and rich man materialistically within the world, had various livestock and all these things, and all of a sudden all that was wiped out. And no sooner was one messenger coming to Job, and they couldn't hardly finish what they was telling him, all the bad news, another one was coming right up after him. In one day's time, seemed like one thing right after another. Can you imagine sometime then Job? Job had seven sons and three daughters. Job lost ten children. Are you hearing me? It'd be bad enough for a person to lose one child, but to lose ten, you get a messenger, and Satan always has a messenger to come by and tell you all the negatives. <laughs> you ever hear all the bad news that you're hearing today? Look at how much the news, even sometimes news is not even news. News has went to Hollywood. <laughs> Amen. And what you do, some of the things that they show upon certain things, even accidents out here along the road, used to be that they had enough respect that they would cover up the deceased. Now the news wants to, and media wants to exploit it, exploit it. When all the blood that is shed and the bodies that were laying, there is no respect anymore. It seems the more gory and more morbid that it is, the better all people tune in. That's right. <laughs> Job went through all this here is with his children. He lost his, he was losing his children, lost his wealth, and then later on Job would lose his health. Job had such boils that would come upon him. And if any of you have ever had a boil, those are very pain, painful. I've had a few of them as a child. Some of them get pretty good size. I don't call them, uh, I'm not trying to be nasty here or anything before dinner, but the pus and so forth, that some of those, they can excruciate a lot of pain. Job had them all over him. All over, he rent, he literally rent his clothes, put ashes on his head, and sat down on the ground, and he was lamenting up over his life. Looked like everything around him come crashing in. All in this short span of time. Have you ever had some days? My friend, you could not probably have imagined how much Job here was losing around him. Me and you could imagine sometimes you may have lost a child. You may have lost your job. You may have lost certain things. But look at the tremendous what he was losing around him in this time. And all the dark clouds begin to come in upon Job. And Job was there weeping and lamenting. And the Bible verse that I read to you, it says that Job said it looked like his life was without hope. <laughs> Job said it doesn't look good. Job was in a time within this particular chapter and he reflected up over his life. 
and how he thought that his days were short here upon this earth. And surely he said, all these things have come in upon me. Sometimes, you know, still bad things happen to good people. Bad things happen to bad people too. Everybody has troubles. And as Brother Blanton and I've said with myself and other preachers as well, either today you're in trouble, <laughs> you've just come out of trouble, or you're getting ready to go into trouble. You don't have to go looking for it, by the way. <laughs> trouble will find you. But you can be sure, you know who is behind this particular trouble? Oh, Satan. Sometimes you think, and I, contrary to what you may hear over some of the TV evangelists <laughs> who are out there promoting a prosperity gospel and so forth, and say that if you would live, uh, if you had lived closer to God, you wouldn't be sick. Hmm. I've seen the Bible said in John chapter 11, and, and Lazarus loved the Lord, didn't he? But Lazarus still got sick. Amen. Amen. I see a lot of folks still love God and they still end up with cancer. It's because you, you can be a child of God and doesn't exempt you from trouble. Amen. Some say that if you live close, if you had enough faith. I've seen people get discouraged up over that. They say, preacher, I ain't got enough faith. I don't have enough faith. If you've got faith enough to kneel down in prayer and call out on God, that's all the faith you need. You could have faith as a grain of mustard seed. You'd say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed. Right. You're trying to work up something within you, and all it is is really an act, and you step out by faith. But Job experienced this tremendous trouble, and here all the dark clouds begin to roll in upon him. And now he says, and he looks upon his life, and he says, my days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. If I don't get all this this morning... Am I back tonight? <laughs> but uh, he says here, the weaver's shuttle. And he says, my days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. Look at how he looks upon how quickly he says, time is passing me by. I want you to see God himself, though God is the master weaver this morning. I know we see God, I've seen him as the carpenter. <laughs> I've seen him as the masonry. I've seen him as a lawyer. I've seen him as my doctor. But this morning I want you to show a little light upon, have you ever seen God? <laughs> He's the master weaver this morning. Amen. Now the weaver sometimes, the weaver shuttle, and it's very interesting sometimes in older days and even in Job and maybe Job himself, maybe he'd noticed his wife or noticed someone else he'd worked to work upon a loom, a loom. Does anyone know what a loom? Yeah, you got it up there? That's why I had that visual. That's a loom with all the threads and various materials. And usually, typically, it is a lady. But notice I said God is the master weaver. So it doesn't hurt us men to do a little sewing every now and then either. So, sewing. So, I've done a little bit. <laughs> 